Gast, dames en heren, hoogwaardigheidsbekleders en uw respectievelijke functies. In de laatste maanden konden we niet voorbij aan de storm van media-aandacht die uitging naar de dramatische gebeurtenissen van 100 jaar geleden. Ook onze gemeente draagt tot op vandaag nog de sporen van deze oorlog. 11 november is uitgegroeid tot een veel meer dan de herdenking van het einde van de Wereldoorlog in alleen. Vandaag staan we stil bij het leed veroorzaakt door alle oorlogen en brengen we een boodschap van vrede, een boodschap van nooit meer oorlog Zoals geschreven staat op de ijzertoren en ik smuid het. Therefore, this Passchendaele ceremony always has been and will remain a tribute to those who stand ready, then and now. Thank you. Bij elk gewapend conflict zijn er nooit winnaars, maar spijtig genoeg enkel verliezers. Bij de slachtoffers zijn er niet alleen diegenen die elkaar met wapens bestreden, maar spijtig genoeg ook ongewapende, gewone burgers. We deden ons dan ook deugd aan het hart om Angela Merkel op 28 oktober laatst leden in Nieuwpoort op een subtiele manier te horen zeggen dat ze zich verontschuldigde. Vooral het leed dat Duitsland aan de Belgische bevolking had aangedaan gedurende beide wereldoorlogen. As we all know, Canada is a country of immigrants, built up by people from all over the world. One of them was Samuel Seed Cooper. Samuel was born in Belfast, Northern Ireland, on the 5th of October, 1892. The son of William and Elisa Jane Cooper, in, a, in, a, in April 1902, when a boy was nearly 10, the family immigrated to Hammond, Ontario, we don't know much of this young life as a farmer in Hammond, but we pick up his trace again in January 1917, when he enlisted in Ottawa. In March 1917, he embarks for Liverpool on the SS uh, Saxenia, a ship of the Cunard Line. On the 20th of June, he is taken as part of a reinforcement draft into the strength of the 21st Battalion Canadian Expeditionary Force at the Tapel France. During these costly actions, Private Cooper is killed whilst being involved with the working party on the right side of the Canadian area. He is one of the many casualties that the Italian suffers in this very limited period of a couple of days. There was an unconfirmed report that his body was buried at Tyne Cod Cemetery, but the Graves Registration Commission did not manage to find his remains. So he was subsequently listed at the Menin Gate Memorial for the missing. In the spring of 1917, they fought at the Vimy Ridge, firing over 10,000 rounds and went on to fight at Clapham Junction, Inverness Copse, Stirling Castle, in the lead up to the Third Battle of Geeks. In October 1917, he was again on the flank of the Canadian Army, fighting along the canal at Hawthorne, putting down harassing fire onto Hill 60. On the 22nd of October, he fell. He was taken to a dressing station called the Huts at Dickybush. He was pronounced dead on arrival and is buried alongside the gunner of his battery in the cemetery that bears the name of the dressing station, the Huts. Only weeks ago, Canada was bitterly reminded of that link. On October 20th, 2014, two members of the Canadian Armed Forces were victim of an intentional hit and run in saint jean sur richelieu Quebec. Warrant Officer Patrice Vincent died of his injuries while his colleague was wounded. Only two days later, on a clear and cold morning on October 22, 2014, Corporal Nathan Sorello 
was gunned down while sent standing sentry at the tomb of the unknown soldier beside the National War Memorial in Ottawa. He was only 24 years old. At the time of his death, Corporal Sorella was living his dream of military service to Canada. It was a dream he cherished for most of his life, a life cut short in a violent and senseless way while he was representing all Canadians in honoring the nation's war dead. 